Hello and welcome. I'm Rajan Datta, presenter of the travel show on BBC World News. With lockdowns, curfews and restrictions, the tourism industry has been devastated by coronavirus. But instead of looking at how the sector is coping, in a series of interviews, we're looking ahead to how it's rethinking the future. What changes can we expect and what roles will issues like sustainability, the environment and technology play in reshaping the industry in the next few years? How important will equitable and responsible growth be in that transformation? Well, that's something the Philippines is grappling with. And I asked the Secretary of Trade, Bernadette Puyel, exactly that. Now, you have said that this pandemic has provided a, an opportunity, a unique opportunity, really, to transform the tourism industry. Tell me, what major changes do you think are needed and why? Um, we actually had a travel survey made by, with more than 12,000 respondents all over the country. And um, based on that survey, first would be health and safety, of course, not, not only in the Philippines, but all over the world, our primary concerns of travelers. 96% want to see certified disinfecting protocols. Based on the survey, travelers also prefer reduced contact activities. So they would rather have um, farm tourism, ecotourism, and also travelers prefer online and digital channels. So 80% or 86% of our travelers expect tourism enterprises to implement self-service processes such as contactless check-in, online booking, digital payments, and the like. Because, Secretary, 2019 was a record-breaking year for yeah. you in terms of tourism. I mean, we're talking about a very different world, in a sense, when tourism yeah. comes back. We had a record number breaking of um, international travel. But the Philippines is lucky in the sense that uh, majority of our tourism uh, contribution is still from domestic tourism. Tourism in the Philippines contributed 12.7%, and domestic tourism is 10.8% of the 12.7%. So we are focusing on domestic tourism. In terms of foreign tourism, how are you going to reassure and attract a bigger share of that market? Um, actually, we are quite lucky. We recently got the world, uh, the safe travel stamps from the WTTC. So we're looking at travel bubbles, partnering maybe with other countries, and they can go directly to these in, um, to tourism destinations. Um, we are happy first, we're starting with um, uh, domestic tourism. So it's more of a dry run to make sure that all health and safety protocols are in place. And of course, the WTTC safe stamp was such a boost for us. And it proves that we passed uh, world standards. Another aspect of the possible changes in the future, what well, the, the, you say they're, they're going to happen, is that you're gonna, you want to be more inclusive. When you, when you talk about indigenous um, peoples, I mean, how can they be included more into tourism? Um, we're trying to um, make tourism more inclusive. For example, we're trying to encourage or even make sure, promote all the products used by our indigenous tribes. It's like an offshoot, what we've been doing to help the, in, the various indigenous tribes. It's what we're bringing in uh, to tourism. Um, what about technology? How do you mm. see that playing a part in the future of the Philippines uh, travel industry, and particularly when it comes to upskilling? Um, actually, I've always been pushing uh, digital technology, contactless technology. But because of the pandemic, maybe that's one good thing about the pandemic. People were forced to do it. But for me also, it's um, digital technology, all this uh, cashless payments have greatly helped uh, tourism. In fact, uh, when I talk to the stakeholders, even with, uh, let's say, there is a vaccine, people will still go contactless, go digital, because it's, it, it's made life easier and it's made um, the tourism industry more vibrant. I mean, obviously, it's been a really, really tough time for tourism, like the rest of the world. But in this new future, uh, you know, when we get beyond this, what excites you most? What are you most What are you most looking forward to? Um, well, actually, it, the the thing that excited me most mo, me most would be 
how how beautiful you know you've been to Boracay but and we've closed Boracay for six months but you know that when you go to Boracay now it's even more beautiful um the governor of Boracay was telling me that he saw some sea creatures that he had not seen well the last time he saw it was he when he was a child and he's like more than 60 plus already so definitely the environment is a winner now and I love it that before when we closed Boracay, it was such a challenge. People didn't really um, care about the environment. But then when we closed it and they saw how beautiful it was, uh, that's when they started to see the importance. But then it was also a challenge because we wanted to do it in other tourist destinations, but they didn't want to be closed. But now they see the importance of the environment carrying capacity that was what we were pushing for for the longest time carrying capacity but now all our local government units know the importance of carrying capacity um so number one the winner here i'm excited about how beautiful the environment is and how people are um are are valuing it um and then number two would be i guess um i'm excited about the digital technology the contactless payments uh, how the tourism industry in the philippines has adapted to all these challenges and um when 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 all the travel restrictions were put in place last march we really thought that we really didn't know there was no light at the end of the tunnel but then as we were adapting it just shows how filipinos are so resilient we've adapted like as we speak we're now meeting via Zoom. Honestly, I only discovered Zoom because of the pandemic. I, I never thought that this was would be possible. I thought that um, it, it was the end last March, but now you you know that you can continue with tourism. You can do, you can embrace technology um, and life goes on. It's just a matter of adapting to all these challenges. I suppose this connects to, the, to, to my final point which is uh, what is the greatest lesson that this pandemic uh, has taught the industry do you think when it comes when it comes to, to, to the future um well of course we the significant lesson is you know how vulnerable the industry is and that and it proves that the filipinos are really resilient um it but of course it's not only a, a challenge here in the philippines but all over the world and as i've said that we really need to adapt to all these challenges and we can restart tourism with health and safety protocols in place back, back march i thought that it was that this was it i thought that there would be no more travel in the absence of a vaccine but in the travel survey that i was telling you i was surprised to see that 77 percent still wanted to travel even in the absence of a vaccine and of course the department of tourism is helping all the department of tourism accredited establishments uh, digitize be contactless so um i guess it just shows that um everybody can adapt to all these challenges and the tourism industry can restart with health and safety as a priority the German capital, Berlin, attracted almost 15 million visitors last year. So how is the city planning for the future? I'm joined by Ralph Ostendorf, who's the Director of Market Management at Visit Berlin. Let me ask you first, is Berlin rethinking tourism in the light of what's, what's happened? Any, are there any major changes you envisage? Well, of course, like all other destinations in the whole world, we are rethinking. I mean, if you look back at the beginning of the year, when nobody really knew what is COVID, what is coronavirus, um, every day you have to rethink. But of course, we also have a long time, long term strategy how to get out of the situation, what will be the next steps. And again, yes, of course, a lot of things have already changed and will also continue to change. I want to try and throw forward though to to perhaps mid next year and, and just the way that the way that perhaps the, the new paradigm then the way that you look at tourism in the future what kind of changes in a positive way as, as, as well can you see happening in in berlin well the good thing about berlin always is has been the past years is there's so many stories that we can tell berlin is full of a living history uh, we have the opening of uh, the Humboldt Forum, which is the new new highlight uh, in late of this year. We now have our new international airport opening uh, end of this week. So there are lots of stories that we can still say. What will, of course, change is 
customer behavior, customer expectations. The biggest challenge, not only for us here in Berlin, but for, for everyone working in the tourism industry is trying to get back this consumer confidence uh, to travel again. Um, we of course need the open borders again. We of course need less travel restrictions. And for Berlin itself, we are of course a very international city. So that means we want to improve uh, the number, um, the rise, the number of our foreign visitors. And uh, if you look at the end of last year, we had about 55% of all our guests Germans, the rest uh, international. And uh, we see us in the benchmark with London and Paris. So we need to improve also the numbers of foreign visitors. And for that, of course, we need open borders. And that is something we want to focus on. But right now, to survive also next year, the domestic market is important. And of course, then European market. Well, let's look at um, perhaps how, how tourism will play out next year. I mean, issues like sustainability, best practices and the environment, are they going to be even more central to your, to your future tourism? At the end of the day, it's always the mix. Um, Berlin has its uh, USPs, but we, of course, have to add more um, offers when it comes to, say, sustainability, nature, the good thing about Berlin is if you look at the map of Berlin, Berlin is a very, very green city. We have a lot of waterways, we have a lot of parks. So combining um, excursions in the neighborhoods, in the parks, on the waterways with the thing you want to experience in Berlin, the lifestyle, uh, the restaurants, the museums, everything, that will be, of course, a different mix um, beginning next year. Because a lot of people are saying that in the future, um, the, the group, large group travel will, will, will reduce. And also people will be looking to get away from urban areas into more rural um, spaced out areas, really. Isn't that going to be a problem for Berlin? No, absolutely not, because Berlin already has been a do-it-yourself city for the past years. Berlin is a typical FIT destination, not necessarily a big group destination. Um, what we've seen already in the past is especially from our guests that are coming from overseas everybody is looking for the unique experience everybody wants to get a local uh, experience especially in the digital world now where you basically can do everything online but the real experience people want to get off the beaten tracks and that's why we have started even before the corona crisis uh, came on um, a typical program which is called Going Local. Berlin is like, like Paris made out of different districts. So we have different uh, 16 districts. So we have an app, for example, which is called Going Local, where visitors in Berlin can guide themselves through the city and really do what you just said, escape the big crowds and, and get a different, unique uh, experience of Berlin. Slow down, don't follow the big crowds, get off the beaten tracks. And that we, again, have, uh, we have already started before that. Will there be long-term changes to the way that nightlife is, is happening? Of course, there also will be changes. Berlin always has reinvented itself uh, over the centuries. So I'm pretty much sure that all those owners of clubs will come up with new ideas, but there will be changes. Uh, the whole culture life of Berlin will remain. It will change, of course, and we will find new ways to attract people also to enjoy our really vibrant nightlife, music scene, etc. Let's look at certain areas where Berlin has, has traditionally done really well. I mean, what about, uh, for example, um, trade fairs? Because you hold a lot of trade fairs and there is, that must be an area of concern because business travel, they say, again, is going to come down. Absolutely. I mean, that, that is something we are facing. The business travel uh, will go down tremendously and a lot of companies will rethink, do we really need to fly from A to B? For a meeting that is maybe taking just one or two hours can we do it online so in the future there will be a mix of everything what we already learning after a half a year of corona crisis is that people are also desperately looking forward to meet each other again live because live experience person networks is a much better has a much better impact on on how we do our business how much is technology going to play a bigger part in your future and in tourism in the past everybody was talking oh yeah we we need to go digital oh we need to do more uh, in the digital but it was always postponed 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 because there was always another reason not to do it right now uh, be it financial reason or whatever so this really has forced us to speed up on, on digitalization 
uh, other parts of the world, if I go to China, if I go to any market in China or any small uh, restaurant in China, just ask, what's your Wi-Fi code? And I can go online. And that hasn't been here the case uh, in Germany and also not in Berlin. That has really sped up. And I think that in the future, it will, again, like I said earlier, be more a mix of real happenings and digital happenings. Um, and we need to work on that very fast. So that's true. It seems a lot of Germans are flying less domestically and taking more trains. Again, is that a trend that you see continuing? The train system in, in, in Germany has improved over the past years, for example. So now we have direct planes going between Berlin and Munich every hour, and it takes only four hours. So it's actually much faster to do instead of going on a plane to go by train. And that, of course, also with the thinking of the people's sustainability and thinking about environment, uh, that will change a lot. And Germany is a small country, so taking the train is anyhow always a good idea. What would you say was the most interesting and exciting change that you expect to see in the future, perhaps with a more optimistic view on this? Everybody will slow down a bit and will probably be able or to use the senses simply more while you travel. Instead of going next, next, next and fast, 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 it will be something like uh, just step back a little bit, sit down a little bit, try to enjoy what you see, what you can experience more. So instead of rushing, really inhale everything with all your senses in a much different way. And I think that will also help every one of us to just um, hit the reset button in, in a different perspective and give you a much better travel experience. And that is something that we already see if we again look at overseas markets, uh, that there will be a trend more to mono destination travel instead of trying to see Europe in seven days and really to focus on um, more products that are sustainable, that give you a combination of local experience, nature experience, culinary experiences, et cetera, et cetera. I think, so I think maybe traveling in the future will even be more fun. That's a very interesting point because the pressure up until now has always been to almost have a checklist so that, you know, and to have pictures taken, selfies in front of, you know, this museum or that, that monument, blah, blah, blah. What you're saying is, is that no, don't go there. Think much more about enjoying each moment. Exactly. Life is for living and to enjoy the moment. So that is the main sentence that I love always to say. Um, step back a little bit and really enjoy what you're doing and don't put your too much on your daily to-do list and uh, just live it. And the last point I'm going to ask you is, in terms of the greatest lesson that you think this pandemic has, has given the industry, what would you say it is? Always expect the unexpected. Uh, Nobody really thought that this year would turn out like it turns out now. And um, it just, I think, again, don't expect too much. Try to live your life, enjoy your life. And uh, there is a lot, still a lot to see in the world. And what I really hope is that all those travel restrictions um, will go down fast next year. Most important is that we get tourism restarted worldwide with the help of everyone who's working in the business, create consumer confidence, um, create new products, make people happy, and then see um, with a positive view. There's always a chance in the crisis and that we have to find. Lisa Kukarinen is the manager of sustainable development at Visit Finland. Her country has a growing tourism industry. So how is it reimagining its future? Now, your country, Lisa, experienced record numbers of international tourists in 2019. In fact, tourist numbers doubled between 2000 and 2019. However, post-COVID, in the next few months, how do you see the future changing? Will there be significant differences? Yeah, this is correct. Even that the tourism industry in Finland was growing, it, it, it still was uh, fairly small, even comparing to our neighbouring uh, countries. Um, however, because the growth was so fast in the past few years, we, we put so much emphasis in sustainability because we wanted to uh, make sure that this growth is sustainable at the same time, that it doesn't have any kind of negative impact in the local communities or to the environment uh, either, so that the positive image of the tourism remains. 
naturally the crowd came from the international visitors. And this has pretty much stopped now because Finland is having some of the strictest, uh, strictest uh, travel uh, restrictions. Um, luckily, we've seen some changes. So the domestic tourism, like in most of the countries, they find their own uh, uh, own country again. But uh, some of the changes we've also seen uh, is that those some of those unique selling boats, some of those things that we naturally have in Finland, such as uh, space, safety, cleanliness, um, our high tech um, health industry, our infrastructure, sustainability, those seem to be now the things that international visitors are looking for. From, from the tourist point of view, when they arrive in Finland, let's say next year and hopefully after the COVID um, restrictions have, have, have eased, um, what, will, what will they notice about traveling in Finland that is, that is different? Yeah, well, the, in the past, the travel to Finland was very much relying on tour operators or travel agencies. Um, not many people yet find Finland on their own. So we haven't had so many independent travelers here, except in the summertime, which is more the low season time. So this is a time when, you know, the free and independent travelers who opt for more lesser known destination or seasons are coming here. And this is what we're expecting now to be the shift. So we are expecting to see more independent travelers during the winter as well, which, was, which has been heavily focusing on groups. Um, another change what the people will be seeing in the very near future in the Finland is that everything is available digitally. Uh, we are already on the way there, but now we have taken such a big jump um, with the enabled technology, um, with, the, with the digital uh, solutions. So this will be something. Um, and as well, I think that with all your senses, people will be sensing the, the care and the, the, the responsible way of delivering the, the tourism services. Because sustainability is now at everybody's heart and core of the business. We're going to look at sustainability a bit more in a second, but just in terms of the way that people do travel in, in Finland uh, normally, and perhaps even more so in the future. I mean, obviously Helsinki is your big city, but you're saying that people will just go all over, right up to the north to Lapland, where you are now, and actually really see the whole place. Yeah, and this is actually one of the most exciting changes that we've already seen now, but what we are expecting to see more in the future. Uh, but still people are opting out from the cities to more remote uh, rural uh, destinations. And this is something that we have wanted to happen already for a long time, that the people do not find only the touristic hotspots, but those hidden gems and destinations around them. So this is actually really exciting. People have started finding already these alternative destinations that, that this is the direction that the tourism is taking uh, uh, at the moment. And there is so much lesser known destination in Finland because the whole of the country is uh, still fairly less known. Um, there will be a destination for everyone. Let's let's unpack this sustainability drive a bit more. So we're talking about the environment. We're also talking about local cultures, are we? I mean, what, what does it mean to 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 push these these barriers further? Traditionally, people linked sustainability with something like a voluntary care for the environment. So it was very very eco focused, and even though that we have been working on sustainable tourism for years. It has taken this pandemic to open people's eyes, really that sustainable development is much more than care for the environment. And now when you're talking about tourism companies in Finland, under the umbrella of sustainability, they immediately link it with the, with the safety, with the, with the care for the com uh, community, uh, involving the community in the tourism development, involving their staff, um, uh, ensuring that they have better stuff, welfare that the neighbors have, um, uh, so much about the regional uh, uh, economy, the, the quality uh, of the product, but also linking it with the accessibility and not just with the digital accessibility, but accessibility for all. So bringing the inclusiveness into it and making tourism possible for all. So. I think this is one of the best takeaways actually in this pandemic that the, the umbrella of sustainability has, has widened. 
And if previously the awareness was the only obstacle we had on our way to become truly sustainable, the pandemic has removed this obstacle. Now we really see a sustainable future. Well, in terms of cultures and, and local communities, I mean, you, do you have in, indigenous communities, do you have local communities and cultures that need to be preserved and you want tourists to explore more? This is one of the biggest countries in, in Europe, so we still, ha still have a lot of uh, regional aspects and strong regional cultures. Um, in the north, we also have the, the Sami people who have very different, very uh, own culture. So this is completely separate culture actually from the, the main Finnish culture. Um, and it has become very important to, to showcase the culture in an authentic way. And also appreciate that the culture should be showcased by those people who are within the culture. So they become stakeholders too in the tourism thing. They're not just objects that people go and look at. They Absolutely, yeah. no. Yeah. And many of the, for example, if you're talking about the, the Sami people, um, they are tourism entrepreneurs themselves. Now, sustainability is, is your speciality. And I know that Arctic issues in particular uh, are of interest to you. Tell me some more about that. What does that mean? When we're talking about Arctic issues, probably the first thing that comes to people's mind is the climate change. This is a huge threat to us. We really do see the, the consequences. It's not any more small signal. We see it every year. So uh, we already have the snow line has already escaped from the south of Finland. So uh, the winters are snow free. There is the tourism companies are of course also um, very much focusing on this issue because our tourism product is relying so heavily on the seasonal changes. So here in the north, we for example already have three uh, ski resorts that are carbon neutral on their way to become uh, carbon negative. And um, there is a lot of um, social sustainability aspects on this because we need to protect our winters to keep Finland as it is, to provide the future generation the, the joy and delight of snow and, and the activities it brings along. Now, what about technology, Lisa? Because but when it comes to, to tourism, how do you see technology playing a bigger part? This pandemic has definitely accelerated things. What I think that is more uh, significant are those um, technological solutions that will enable tourism with human touch. Because after all, we are all looking for meaningful encounters. We do want to meet the local people and learn about the local way of life. So hopefully in the very near future, we have the technology that doesn't only enable tourism without people, but with people. Just finally, um, Lisa, what would you say is the greatest lesson that this pandemic has taught uh, the Finnish tourism industry um, when it considers the future? Well, I must say that it probably is the uh, definition of sustainability and how it has proven. It, it has really evolved from beyond environmental concerns or ethical credentials. It has really given a holistic purpose for sustainability. In Central America, the environment and heritage are key draw cards for tourists. Ivan Eskilson is Panama's Minister of Tourism. Um, tell me, Panama's developing a new sustainable tourism circuit. Tell me what that is and how important it is to the future. For sure. I, I, I'm very happy to share this because this is actually one of our main drivers of our uh, brand new sustainable tourism master plan, which was just approved unanimously by our national uh, tourism council. So sustainability and the environment will definitely play a huge role in reshaping tourism. We agree hundred percent. Thankfully, Panama has a lot to offer in, in that realm. We recently announced the approval of, of our brand new five year master plan. And this plan reactivates Panama's tourism and positions the country's conservation and sustainability efforts at the forefront. Along with our unique nature, culture, and historic offerings, capitalizing in the overall safety that Panama offers via three focus areas, cultural heritage, green heritage, and blue heritage. Our cultural heritage narrates the history of Panama as a bridge of the world. We have this unique position, connecting world-class attractions such as our old city, 
Casco Antiguo, one of several UNESCO World Heritage Sites found across Panama. Also our world famous Panama Canal, the first, also our, the first, the world's first uh, interoceanic railway, uh, and also our rich natural, a rich cultural diversity, including seven live indigenous peoples we have in our country, among many other cultural items. Our green heritage takes a visitor across national parks, protected areas, and private reserves in Panama's neotropical rainforest, including experiences through the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute's visitor centers, one of which is Barro Colorado Nature Mon Monument in the Panama Canal watershed, which is considered the most intensively studied tropical forest in the world. And some of, and some of our blue heritage uh, includes whale watching, pearl conservation projects, and world-class diving surrounding Coiba National Park, another of our UNESCO World Heritage Sites, which also happens to share the Eastern Tropical Pacific Marine Corridor with the Galapagos Islands, as well as exploring the Caribbean turquoise waters and exuberant marine ecosystems of Bocas del Toro, among many other attractions. Is there ever a kind of conflict between promoting um, indigenous rights and the environment whilst also developing tourism? How do you make sure that the, that the former is protected, even though you're boosting tourism? We, we understand there's a, a very ethical, a very important ethical component when it comes to indigenous tourism. Even the UNWTO has published ethical um, uh, guidelines and policies that all countries in tourism should follow. So the way we approach it, first of all, is understanding that um, our indigenous uh, millinery traditions are something, are really a cultural jewel. As long as the framework and the approach and the narrative in the, in the way we promote um, these destinations is the right one, uh, I think not only will, will we be able to respect and, and, and drive uh, tourists to respect uh, these millinery cultures, but we're, we also believe we can help them uh, in their efforts to preserve, as, as, as we know that today in age with globalization, many cultures around the world, uh, in many, many indigenous cultures around the world are uh, disappearing slowly because they sort of blend in to, the, to globalization, right? So in the case of Panama, because they have their own autonomous territory, and they have remained isolated, even though we are a small country and distances are not very far away, uh, maybe one or two hours from urban centers, we have very authentic cultures that have lived in their own autonomous territory. So that being considered, um, it, it's an advantage in, in that sense that they have been able to preserve uh, their pristine culture. Uh, and again, uh, the whole idea is that um, with this, uh, sustainable tourism master plan. And with this right approach, we are able to respect and consider these ethical guidelines. Obviously, in order to protect um, to th those groups, you have to make limits on, on the amount of tourists coming. Um, in, I mean, in any case, because of COVID in a sense, there, there has been a change where big mass tourism is, is going to be, I think, on the decline um, and, and smaller groups and going out into less urban areas will become much more encouraged. Are you comfortable with that in Panama? Is that something that, that fits in with your, your vision of tourism? Actually, we, uh, that actually is a strong competitive advantage for Panama because we, uh, we have never really uh, thrived on mass uh, tourism and, and we have never really develop that segment uh, and, and, and only consider, take this into consideration that Panama has over 40% uh, of our surface area is um, a rainforest. Uh, we have over 30% uh, of our country, uh, our protected areas. Um, so for us, um, the, uh, social distancing and, and open areas is, is sort of our natural normal in that sense, right? So uh, in this case, we are actually trying to capitalize on this competitive advantage and continue developing these authentic experiences in our pristine, uh, not only um, uh, green experiences, which I mentioned we have the green heritage routes, but also our blue heritage routes. We have uh, over a thousand islands in our very small country, uh, both in the Pacific Oceans 
and the, uh, and the Caribbean. So we have different ecosystems, uh, very well connected. You could have, you could surf uh, on the Pacific Ocean in the morning and then surf in, in, in the Caribbean in the afternoon. Uh, and you can take uh, the, the world's first uh, interoceanic uh, railway to connect only one hour distance from, from one ocean to the other. So for nature lovers, which I, we believe is, uh, will be a stronger uh, segment um, in, in post COVID, uh, we believe that we are we have an opportunity to thrive and to position ourselves with a very strong competitive advantage. Tell me, how much is technology um, an important part in the future of, of tourism uh, in Panama? For sure. In technology in general, we believe um, is shaping, helping define the future of the travel industry. During the lockdown, all tourism destinations use technology to continue to inspire travel. Uh, as the world continues to reopen and, and travel picks up, again, technology continues to play a major role. For example, virtual reality has been an emerging technology in several uh, different sectors, but its role within the tourism industry especially, is especially significant. After all, it provides travelers with the ability to experience faraway locations from the comfort of their own home and can be a difference in whether they ultimately complete a booking. And Panama is not the exception in the sense that we have developed uh, virtual tours also during the pandemic. Technology is also an item that is accelerating due to uh, the pandemic. Just one last question for, uh, from you, Minister, which is, and, and to stand back in a sense, what's the greatest lesson the pandemic uh, has given the industry when it considers its future, do you think? I think the pandemic has given uh, everyone uh, a moment to step back, look inwards and reevaluate what the tourism industry means for each country and has gave us all the opportunity has given us all the opportunity to look thing look at things from a holistic approach this way we have been able to get in touch with our essence as a country and come out with a relaunching of our destination betting on a strategy based on innovation and differentiation of our destination based again on this extraordinary wealth and diversity of our natural and cultural heritage and this has turned into the greatest lesson i believe the pandemic has given our industry, learning to look inwards, getting in touch with our natural national identity and converting this into, into the cause that can unite public and private sectors into the relaunching of our destinations. I'd like to thank my guests for their fascinating insights into how the tourism sector is changing and how they're planning for the future. For more on the latest travel news and trends, please join us each week on The Travel Show on BBC World News. While we're covering the effects of the pandemic on the industry, we're still getting on the road to share the joy of travelling with our audiences. I'm Rajan Datta, and thanks very much for joining me. <laughs>